What is going on guys? We are back with more World Cup. Well you playing for Team of France and second me to playing for US West. The score should be 2-1 and one for Team France before this game. I'm, I'm re-narrating over this because I wasn't busy earlier when the game happened but it's basically live. You guys will see the smoke to chat and everything. I know that some of you people, some of you guys are here to see the smoke to chat, right? So yeah, they both bring really bulky, um, balanced teams. Like they have their pivots, you know. You can see Psychic Mewtwo is gonna be Stellar Fox Call Fable. That's his only potential rocker. You can see Psychic Mewtwo has no hazard control, but he has two Magic Art Pokemon that don't care about Stealth Rocks and Spikes, and he has Regenerate on his Toxapex, and Celesteela does resist Stealth Rocks. So his team doesn't really care about rocks that much. And Relu just leads her with a Tapu Bulu, which is a nice lead for him. Saki Mewtwo is going to be forced out, probably into his Celesteela here, because if, if he goes for rocks and Tapu Bulu goes for SD, he's going to be in a really bad position. I assume this Clef is going to be knockoff or flamethrower. I've seen a, a lot of flamethrower Clef to like, um, deal with stuff like Celesteela, like do some damage to them. He SDs up, and this is some Z move Tapu Bulu. It's either going to be. The superpower, the Stone Edge. We do see Stone Edge, so it's probably gonna be the uh, Continental Crush. He did go for regular Stone Edge first, knowing that he can live a heavy slam. And Stone Edge brought it in range from Z Stone Edge. So this is kind of a 50 50 because Psychic Mewtwo could go for Protect here, expecting the Z move, and he could potentially live another Stone Edge if he goes for Protect. But if Volu goes for SD, predicting Protect, it's gonna be bad. I do remember watching this specific turn on my phone, so I actually know what's happening here. Um, but I only watched like I think five or six turns on my phone. So yeah, let me talk about a bit more about Will I owe you Will Use team. I think it's gonna be either Scarf Chomp or Scarf Greninja. I'm thinking Scarf Guard Chomp. I'm thinking he could be spikes on his Greninja because he um he really likes that hazard support and spikes are gonna be nice in this game even though they only hit the Zygarde they only hit the Zygarde, the Zyperia and, and the Toxapex it's still gonna be really nice if he's Ash Greninja like Blunder says in one of his videos um, Greninja's, Ash Greninja sets up the sweep for itself with getting up spikes because then it can ship it ships at its checks like Toxapex and Tangos and then they, they might be in 2 hit KO range from Dark Pulse if you get up rocks and spikes which is kinda like it's really cool I love that mod so much and he does go on his Zygarde on the Continental Crush. I do remember this turn, like I said. And it does a good amount, but... Yeah, the 50, okay. So this Tapu Bulu is obviously in range from... 1000 Arrows if it's banded. And Zygarde gets Grand Turn first, so that confirms that Zygarde is faster. He goes for E-Speed though. Why did he go for E-Speed? Not really sure why he went for E-Speed. He should have been faster no matter what, right? And in case well you went into something like Mew or Celesteela, like I don't know why E Speed was the play there. Maybe he wasn't sure if he was faster, I don't know. But yeah. He goes out into Celesteela, which is nice. Knowing that the Clefable might come out to set up the rocks and Heavy Slam is gonna do a good chunk. So he Psychic Mewtwo is not gonna stay and he's probably gonna go out into Toxapex here. He goes for soft bolt scouting. Okay, wow. I mean, he still took like 11% there because soft bolt heals 50, leftovers heal 6%, but it does way more than soft bolt can heal. So Psychic Mutu is gonna switch out. And it's Toxapex, I assume, yeah. I thought he would do that last turn. I haven't seen these turns live, as you guys can tell. I've only watched like every 10 minutes on my phone. But yeah, well use Mew is gonna be Defog, Softball, uh, Will-O-Wisp, and the last slot is either a Psychic Ice Beam or Volt Switch, I'm not sure about that yet. But he goes in the Clefable on a double switch, a really great play because he knows that well he wants to get the rocks off and he can heal his Clefable on the Mew and he can just set the rocks back up and his Clefable is uh, at a healthy amount again so his rocks are really nice for Psychic Mew too. He wants to win this for his team. His score would be 2-2 two and two if Psychic Mewtwo wins. It will be 3-1 and one for France if Well, he wins for his team. He's just going back to Pex. Yep. 
And I don't know if we saw the pack stack damage yet, but I think from what I remember this pack is, um, didn't show an item. He does show that he's toxic. So let me talk to you guys. This is the set. I remember seeing him on my phone, I think that Toxic Packs did not have Black Sludge. So I'm thinking it is a Shed Shell Toxic Packs. And this has been used uh, lately, a lot lately, um, especially from people from Team US East. I'm also going to be talking about it in an upcoming video in the future, like easy game that is going to be coming up later. It's Infestation, Toxic, Toxic Spice and Recover. A lot of people have used this on US East, uh, Spadev can take on um, Greninja, like non-extra sensor non protein Greninja, it can prevent Ash from, Ash from getting its form off, it's really spit death bulky. And well, it shows that he goes for rocks, I assume it's gonna be Scarf Stealth Rocks. I know some people don't like that set. And he didn't have any lead sheet switch-ins other than um, Hard Top of Bulu, which probably was not the play. But yeah, he was able to Toxic the Mew, which is uh, really nice for him. Because the Mew was forest the default kind of rocks were annoying for Wellyu. Like he wants... Well, you can live with Hazards up, but Hazards are a bit annoying. They hit every mon on his team and Psychic Mewtwo on the other side, he doesn't really care that much about rocks. Because he has uh, one mon that resisted and two Magic Guard users and uh, Toxapex as a regenerator. Uh, Zygarde also resists rocks, I just realized. So only only the superior takes 12 from rocks. Everything else takes... Toxapex also takes 12, but it has regen and the other two mons either don't care about rocks or have resist them and only take 6%. Also, um, like Psychic Mutu only cares about hazards if it's rocks plus spikes, so Wallyu is gonna have to hazard stack him. Because in the long run, Wallyu is always it's not gonna be able to default because his Muse poisoned. Uh, default has less BP than rocks from Clefable. So he's not getting the defog off, let's be honest here. Goes on the Clefable, potentially building a lead sheet there. And I think he's gonna pivot out into his Toxic Packs here. And if he does that, we shall see if the Toxic Packs is no item. And I think that's just what I remember that didn't have an item. I really think it's a Shed Shell. Because Toxic Packs is just important for some teams. We know he's Fist Death Clefable, that's the most rent set to switch into Choice Band er Southern Arrows. It's able to check Mega Medicham somewhat. Can also take like a hit from Mega Heracross. And like, it's the dev part of the team. The Spadev core is gonna be Celesteela and Pax. He just goes for the rocks, he doesn't really care. He was able to, he would have been able to take a heavy slam. But he goes hard into Bulu, either expecting the rocks or expecting a switch into Toxic Pax. Not really sure what he expected. I think he expected the Toxic Pax to be honest. Even though the Pax would have been able to live it. Live a hit and poison the Tabu Bulu. But yeah, we see um, Psychic Mutus Celestia took a good chunk earlier from the plus two Stone Edge, but it got its health back. Leftovers and Leech Seed just make Celestia one of those annoying Pokemon that can, like, it's kind of like Feral Thorn. You can be really low, but it just gets its health back. And it keeps. Oh my lord. This was a nice play though, I can completely understand this play going clef again because even if you heavy slams you have the leftovers plus leech seed recovery. You don't get affected by leech seed. And he's tempted to just click leech seed instead of heavy slam because of the tox packs. And we do see it's encore clefable in the last slot, so it's gonna be your self rock, uh, moonblast, softball, encore. But yeah, he's gonna be bringing in his tox packs here. I don't think it's worth it for him to stay in with the clav. He does go for Moomba though, he doesn't he really doesn't care about this. He just says I have leftovers in Grassy and I'm not staying in. Uh, I'm not switching. <laughs> so he goes into the Mew and he's probably just gonna softball it up. He took rocks and poison. As he goes into Superior and we guys I do remember this. Seeing this, it's I'm um, gonna be substitute superior. But this is really awkward renarrating over games. Like I've seen some turns, but not everything. I just prefer narrating the games live. <laughs> and we do see the substitute superior, which is really annoying for Wallyu. You can just spam substitute here. He only loses like one percent every turn because lefties and leech should just heal him back. Um, that's gonna be a mega Tita looking at Wallyu's team. And yeah, he did realize that there's no point in defogging with the Mew. 
so it just keeps he's just gonna keep rocks on both sides and it's gonna be important for him to get up a spike like I said earlier to um, somewhat pressure the toxic packs and it also hits the uh, superior and the zygarde even though the zygarde is at around 60 if I recall correctly so it already took some damage yeah if the clever is healthy it can also like take a hit from the Tyranitar, like a plus one stone edge. So I'm, I'm not really sure if like if I would have played the the Clefable like second Mewtwo, but I do understand why he stayed stayed on the on the on the Celesteela. Because one he had leech um he had leftovers and grassy terrain support. He was not affected by Leech Sheet and also well you might have feared him to just pivot out into a toxic packs on the heavy slam. So I can understand this. We do see a scarf. It's now confirmed that it's choice scarf Garchomp as he does dodge a leaf storm, which is a bit annoying. But he has just since we know this is scarf, he has a free switch into his he has a free switch into his Clefable, so Psychimito didn't really take any damage, but he would have gotten a good amount of damage off on his chomper. And this is like the only Mon besides Greninja that outspeeds the superior, so it's definitely a bit annoying for Psychimito. But he's still in a fine position. You can just go for a Moonblast, get off some chip damage. Funny how a crit only does 13, 15% to Celesteela. So he has shown that he wants to stay in with his Clefable on the Steela, but I, I wouldn't stay in anymore. But yeah, I can see Volio at this point just saying, I'm gonna go for Heavy Slim because this guy has been staying in for too long and it's really annoying. So he does just do that. And. He doesn't really want to go for Protect here with his uh, Celesteela because that would give Toxapex a free turn where it could go for Toxic Spikes. But uh, while you kind of wants the lefties on his Celesteela. He doesn't have the best answers for the Toxapex. His Mew being poisoned is really huge and it's kind of low. Tabu Bulu is also pretty low so it, and can get Scald Burn so you don't want to really switch that in. Everything risks getting Scald Burned other than Mew because Mew is already poisoned. So this Toxapex is going to be a pain. Yeah, we do see it doesn't have Black Sludge, like I said earlier. That's just from what I remember from watching a few turns on my phone. That it didn't have Black Sludge and I immediately thought it has to be Shed Shell. Because <laughs> we already see it's not Rocky Helmet. And Shed Shell has been used in World Cup, like in a few games. So this is tough for Willy, I actually don't know what I would do here. Like Sakimitu is free to click either Toxic Spikes or Scald. I think Scald is a fine play, yeah, he's just trying to get the burn. So Willy just decides, hopefully, like he hopes that he can avoid the Scald burn and goes for Leech Sheet. He cannot avoid the Scald burn. Um, burn get nerfed to a Celesteela is like, it's not the end of the world for a Celesteela, but it's gonna be really annoying. Especially when he doesn't have Leech Sheet up, and especially if he has switches in multiple times, he ha he's gonna keep taking stealth rocks and the burn cancels out the leftovers recovery so he's gonna get run down so yeah I do from what I think if we're looking at values team I was thinking he's Ashgren and I also remember that he went that he's Ashgren from uh, watching a few turns on my phone so I, don't, I would not stay in here if I'm will you the thing is he just doesn't have good answers and Psychic Mewtwo is doing a really good job at like pressuring him already. Um, Cause if he goes back into Celesteela he takes uh, Stealth Rocks plus Moonblast and he's gonna be at around 40% maybe 38. Something along those lines. And it's just gonna be a really bad position because Celesteela is burned. So Celesteela doesn't even beat the Clefable anymore. So I really don't know what I will do here if I'm Wolio. Psyching the Greninja also isn't the play. I mean he could get up a spike because Psychic Mewtwo doesn't have hazard control but Psyching of Greninja, that's a potential win con, I would not do that. But yeah the burn on the, on the Celesteela, not only because of it gets worn down it's huge, it's also huge because of the um, heavy slam damage getting reduced and Clefable being able to wall it. It does double out on the Toxic Packs. I don't know what he predicted there, but the Mew shows Psychic is absolutely nothing. So like I said, this is probably a more Spadef packs that bounced off like 
Um, he got a spadef drop, so Psychic Mute dude probably doesn't want to stay in here. He gets infestation, chip damage, plus poison chip damage off on the Mew, which is really nice for him. But yeah, you can switch out here, and if the Mew goes for South Ball, that's fine, because... That's fine for Psychic Mute because the poison damage will um, rack up over time. He goes hard into the Superior, and he's probably just going to substitute. The Toxic just works for him, works for him really well here. Because Mew gets burned down... It racks up more every turn, and if you substitute spam, you can see, like, now he goes in the guard jump, and thanks to the sub, you can see what, have, what the guard jump locks itself into. If he goes for Outrage, you get a free switch into Clefable. Um, I don't think he has a Dragon Claw, just the way this guard jump has been played. He showed Stealth Rocks, Outrage, and the other moves probably have to be uh, Earthquake, and I think Stone Edge has to be the last move, because he's... He's not super weak to Volcarona because I'm thinking that's like a Mega Tyranitar, but if he, then Volcarona is paired with Dougie, he's still kind of weak to that. Because Water Shuriken from Greninja is not the most reliable, especially if you haven't gotten your Ash Form off. It's not the best Volcarona check. But yeah, the Clefable is just free to click Moonblast here. I don't think he loses anything, especially, like I said, the Celestia got the Burner. So, like, if he goes into. If he goes into Mew, he's just gonna be forced to a uh, softball because of the poison, the rocks, and the Moonblast chip damage. So I just think Psychic Mute is uh, overall in a really good position. Moonblast brings the Mew onto 37. He could just Moonblast spam. It's a special attack drop. So the Clefable is really... The Clefable is in a really fine position here. And yeah, he was forced out there because Toxic would have racked up over time. So I think Value is like, kind of trying to stall out Moonblast PP, but it's not working out that well because his entire team is getting weakened in the process. And yeah, the Toxic in the Mew was just really huge. Yeah, he can't lead sheet this, thanks to Magic Guard, so this works out really well for Psychic Mew too. Um, Heavy Slam only doing 35 with the burn, I think that might have even been a hard roll. And yeah, Celestina is basically dead. He doesn't have Healing Wish support or anything to bring it back healthy. So he's just gonna softball up. I don't know if I would have gone for Moonblast, I probably would have gone for softball to play it safe. Because he could have potentially, um, he would have been in range from a crit there. But yeah, he gets in the Tabu Bulu knowing that Psychic Mutu would go for a softball there. I don't remember how healthy Psychic Mutu's Celestia is, but it seems it's really healthy, so it can easily switch into this Horn Leech. Yeah, I don't really like on another crush on Tabu Bulu. I mean, it's nice to not be walled by Volcarona. It's also nice for Zapdos. Yeah, his, yeah, Zapdos is a bit annoying for his team, so I do understand why he has Continental Crush on this specific team. But in general, I'm not the biggest uh, fan of that set. I usually like the Leech Sheet set on top of Bulo with Short Stance, uh, Woodhammer, or Le Horn Leech, and then Z Superpower in the last slot. Because you can versus Stall, you can um, you can Leech Sheet Skarmory versus Stall, and then they, br they lose their sturdy, you can SD up, so they can't counter you, and then if they lost their sturdy, you can blow them away with a Z Superpower or something like that. But yeah, the, um, he got in his Greninja on a flamethrower. Um, Psychic Mutant did flamethrower because it hits not only the top of Bulo, it also hits the um, opposing Celestia. But I think he could have just heavy slammed there. Because the opposing Celestia would have probably died to that anyway. He goes out into Clefable, but Psychic Mutant can kind of afford to make the Clefable play because he still gets leftovers in Grassy Terrain, even though dead it a lot. I mean, it's definitely Specs Greninja. Um, he, he ran into Clefable in case the Greninja went for Dark Pulse. Um, I still think going hard into Toxapex might have been better. It's not like well, you had that much to pressure the Toxapex. Even if he doubled out into Garchomp, you have decent switch-ins to Garchomp in the back. You also have Grass Terrain. So Earthquake doesn't do anything from Chomp to Toxapex. But yeah, he's obviously going to go out into to Toxapex knowing that uh, he's locked into Hydro Pump. He can also go out into Superior, but I think Toxapex is his play. If he does just do that. Grassy Terrain runs out, so that's a smart double on Value's part to double in his Guard Chomp. Get the Grassy Terrain recovery the last turn of Grassy Terrain, so he cancels, it cancels out the Stealth Rock damage that his Guard Chomp took. And he's gonna double back out, predicting, um, yeah, the Cell Stealer exactly. Like it was pretty obvious that he wasn't staying in there. 
he might be he might click dark yeah he's probably free to click dark pulse here because psychic mutu might go in his toxic packs and his clefable might uh it's probably two hit ko at the range it's at and dark pulse gives you a chance to flinch he can also go for a spike he predicts the switch into toxic packs as he does decide to throw up a spike that's a smart play um but if psychic mutu stayed in there and just just went for lead seed that would have been bad for will you uh, I should have called if the plus two stone edge damage earlier was meant that it was fist of Celestila. Because if it meant that it was fist of Celestila, then I obviously know why the Celestila was switching out there. Because if a fist of Celestila, you're not staying in on a spec Greninja. But he gets off an infestation and Starfrog crit the 6%. So it takes basically infestation cancels out the raw, um, the resident recovery that the Bulu got. Psyche Mewtwo is probably just gonna go back into a Salas dealer here and it's still at 60% right you can either go for lead seed here breaking a switch I can see well you're thinking of his own Salas dealer but you can also just go for heavy slim uh, I don't see him losing that like much from going for heavy slim I guess Volio's way of winning this is Dragon Dancing up with Mega Tyranita Light game. He sacks off the Mew because okay it doesn't it doesn't get sacked off, but he, the Mews get gets brought down really low. So this is probably you would you don't want to stay in here if you psychic Mewtwo because there's the option that the Mew will wisps you. And also if you go for protect, if you're psychic Mewtwo, there's the thing the thing is the Mew could go for soft bolt on your protect. Um, I mean, he can go for protect, but Mew softball and you protect is a bit annoying. I think the Clefable is definitely in range to get 2 hits KO'd from Psychic, or it's like kind of low, so he probably doesn't want to go in a Clef here. Not really sure what he wants to do here. If he predicts the Mew to not go for Will Wisp and like predict the softball, it's obviously not going to defog. Like, well, he's not going to defog because he got up the spike and the rocks, and it already. He realized that he could not keep rocks off it on his side, so he decided to get up heads on the other side. Um, I mean, the Celestia being burned would mean that the Tyranitar could set up on it more easily. The only thing that the Celestia can do to the Tyranitar who's burned is um, get up a Leech Seed. So in that sense that the Tyranitar might become really annoying late game. Um, yeah, exactly. That's a really nice play going into Alakazam. I didn't even think about that because it has Magic Up before it Mega Evolves. It doesn't take Hazard damage. It has the Grassy Terrain support. It doesn't take Stealth Rocks damage. It only takes some chip, chip damage from Psychic. I don't know why I didn't think about that play. It was really well played. And you can pick up the Mew with Shadow Ball. He did not Mega Evolve just to keep his Magic Guard ability. So if he switches back in on Hazards, he doesn't take Hazard damage. And yeah. He goes on the Scarf Guard Jump and he's going to be clicking as an Outrage or Earthquake here. And Psychic Mewtwo can just go into Celestia here to see what Value locks himself into. Uh, Value might to, might double out predict in the Celestia. I don't think he's going to be ha uh, packing a fire move, and even if he packs like Fire Finger, Fire Blast, it's not going to do much to Celestia. I can also see Psychic Mewtwo going into Celestia and then doubling out the next turn. If the Garchomp stays in, to get more lefties on his Clefable. Like if the Gajum stays in this particular turn is what I'm saying and he gets the Celestia in um, then it's obvious that Value isn't staying in so that turn Psychic Mewtwo could double into Clef but we will see what happens. I don't remember this turn to be honest. Like I said I only saw a few turns on my phone. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Psychic Mewtwo doesn't want to stay in here. Like if he's really confident that the chomp it's going for Orvich, he can go hard Clef, but going hard Celestia is just his best play. So I don't know why he's taking so long. Maybe he doesn't maybe he wants to keep his Celestia healthy, because I think it's at around 50 after rocks, maybe 49, 48. Don't remember the exact number. But if he wants to keep it more healthy for the Mega Tita, that could be the reason why he's like not making a play, but he doubles out into Greninja, potentially predicting that the Celestia as he does just go out into that. And he's gonna be clicking um, Dark Pulse here, I assume. So he goes for Protect to Scout. Yeah, like he had to go for Dark Pulse because if he goes for Hydro Pump, 
uh, toxic packs just walls you forever and if you go for dark pulse you do get the chance to um, flinch either the toxic packs or the, the saddest dealer if the saddest dealer stays in and it's also two chaos the club fable so you can't really switch into this I assume Zelda's dealer can take one, but like I said, he probably wants to keep this for um, getting off nice damage on Mega Tyranitar later on in the game. Because his Clefable is kind of low at the moment, so Mega Tita is looking a bit threatening to Psychic Mute as it should. It needs two Dragon Dances, I think, to outspeed the Mega Alakazam. It can set up on Toxic Packs if it like dodges a Toxic, but it looks like uh, Psychic Mute still has like. The match is still in his control as long as he doesn't get like hacks and like misses toxic with toxic packs was a tita later on or something like that. Cause I don't see what Tita sets up on. It locked it sets up on um Zygot locked into E speed, but he's not gonna allow that to happen. And it sets up on If he nah, it doesn't really set up on anything else other than so I got locked into E-Speed, but it does decide to stay in. This is um, smart in the sense that the Greninja is in r range to die from rocks after the Heavy Slam. But he did let the Celestia get damaged. But if he, if he plays it smart, like the Tita isn't gonna set up on much and he doesn't even need the Celestia healthy. So he's probably just gonna go on the Toxic Packs. He can also sack his, he can also sack his Celestia and then come in with Mega Alakazam. Because uh, well, he doesn't have hazard control left, so his Greninja dies to rocks if it switches out, and he could revenge it with um, Mega Alakazam. Obviously, he can also revenge it with E Speed from Zygarde, but that's probably what he wants. Not that that's probably what he wouldn't do because he doesn't want to be locked into E Speed. I just I was just talking about this that he doesn't want to give the Tita a potential free Dragon Dance. It just goes in the Toxic Pack that I was thinking, and either he was going to Pax or he was going. Um, to sack his Celestia and then revenge him with Alakazam. If he gets flinched here, it's gonna be annoying, but he does avoid the flinch. And so he's gonna be forced to recover again to not be in 2-hit KO range. But uh, he just goes in for infestation, okay? I thought he just wants to keep this uh, super healthy, but you also risk the flinch the more you go for recover, so I do understand why he went hard for infestation. So, well, he's either gonna say now or never and go on a teaser and hope for a toxic dodge, or he's gonna go on a guard jump, which doesn't really get him that much. I mean, Bulu can also kill this, but Bulu is not going to be winning this game as it's uh, super low at the moment and it's in range from Alakazam, it's in range from E-Speed from Zygarde and might also be in range from Leaf Storm from the Superior. But yeah, the Superior Leaf Storm can miss the main thing that we want to focus on, like the main Pokemon that can revenge the Tapu Bulu are the Alakazam and the Zygarde. And the Tapu Bulu being so low also means that it can't really set up on the Toxic Packs. So I think his only way of winning is like I said, uh, Dragon Dance with Mega Tita and hope for the best that well you misses uh, that Psychic Mewtwo misses some moves. Yeah, I also recorded another game which was between um, Europe and Latin America. This game actually happened before this one. But yeah, I decided to re-narrate and upload this one first. The other one will be following uh, like a few hours after this one. Just just wait a bit. Um, I know you guys will like all this World Cup coverage, obviously. So yeah, advantage is saying in the chat, come on, second so YouTube, no hacks, please. Um, he's gonna drag Nance up, obviously. He needs to drag Nance up twice to outspeed Mega Alakazam, I think. There's the toxic, it doesn't miss, and it basically means that the game is over. I don't think Waldio is gonna bring this back at all. I think I remember this sp specific turn, and he, I think he misses a stone edge here, which sucks. But it doesn't matter because he only dragon danced up once. So Mega Alakazam should still outspeed a Tita if it's jolly, uh, if it's timid Alakazam. Maybe, maybe Second Mewtwo has modest Alakazam, and that might out get outsped. I would have to run the calcs for that. I don't know in my in, in the top of my head if um, Modest Alakazam outs gets outsped by plus one Megata. But he does miss the stone and sh but it shouldn't matter, like I said. 
Like this game was over when he hit the toxic. He just well, you had to hope for toxic misses. But you obviously sucks because you had to take another round of poison. But it doesn't suck as in it it doesn't like change the outcome of the game. Yeah, he just he just uh, said it himself. Whatever you had it anyway. And yeah, the smoke just chatted saying that too, that the mist didn't change anything. <laughs> Someone said, Bully the Bully said, Dragnan's rest teacher. <laughs> so yeah, if he's timid Alakazam, he can just go into that. Um, he can also, no, he can just go into Celesteela and click protect to get more poison damage on this. Um, I think that the next two turns of poison will be able to kill off the Tita. Because if Alakazam only has Focus Blast to kill us, you obviously don't want to risk that. He just goes for Fire Punch, he doesn't want to risk missing. <clears throat> and yeah, you guys can see he goes down to 11% so the next round of poison will kill this Tita. And Psychic Mute is gonna go for a double protect here. And he does get it, which is like, you can say it sucks, but it doesn't matter, like I said, the game was over. Because if, if he lost the Celestila, like, he didn't need the Celestila at that point. Because Garchomp can't really lock into a move that kills every Pokemon. If he locks into Earthquake, that gets, if the Celestila dies, Earthquake is still resisted by um, the Superior. If he goes for a Dragon move, Clefable comes in for free. Oh, here I was hovering over the monsters just to see their health. This is just when I came back. I was in another in, in another room before this game, and I just came back to like the last five turns of this game live. <laughs> and yeah, I was checking how else the superior was, and was uh, out of range from earthquake. I'm pretty sure it was at 69 or something like that, so it was around at around half. So the score should be two and two now between France and US West. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later with the next with another game for the series. My man Easy played the next game already. I recorded live. So stay tuned for that. And I'm also gonna be bringing you Latin America vs. Europe one game. And it's all recorded for today so far. And tomorrow there's gonna be a lot more games. I'm not sure how much sleep I'm gonna be able to get. Um I might record with friends tomorrow if I'm not gonna be able to catch that much sleep so that I'm so that they can take over if I'm like can't concentrate. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I hope you enjoy the coverage and we'll see you with more content. Stay tuned and peace out. Whew.